in Stellenbosch. It's harvest season. Let's see how it goes from this to this. So this is two leads. What we're gonna do is we're gonna follow two leads from dumping to bottling. From dumping until bottling. So Suliz is taking us through the entire process because she knows the entire process. And let's go. You know, I got it. I know. So what happens is this wine estate is a co-op. So they'll buy grapes from other vineyards and then they'll go through the whole process to create wine with them. This wine estate will then work a deal with like China or France or America to then ship this wine overseas. So the locals won't even see this wine. I always thought that it was this big massive plank, like a floorboard, but that's it. So this is the guy that'll give you some of the vanilla, some of the coffee flavors, generally in Pinotage. Yeah, okay. Sounds good to me. So the juice goes from the outside through a pump into the winery. This is the super machine. So the wine goes into this. Inside, there's a balloon expands and it squashes the grapes. And it contacts and it turns and it squashes again. So it's crushed by the balloon. This is the caper. Okay. So this is the caper. It is used for a process called maceration, where you see all those skins. They're lying with a must. They're lying with their juice. And the juice is drawing flavors and tannins from the skin. And this is a, an enormous caper. And all of that is what's coming from outside. Those are all of the de-stemmed skins. And they'll sit like this in that caper, again, macerating. For seven days, it sits in these pods, but you do a couple of pump overs every yes. couple of days. So the pump over draws all of the juice from the bottom and then pours it right on top to keep the skins, also known as the cap, to keep that wet. Yes, yeah. Okay, how do we get it in manual okay. And the juice just comes through. Okay. This is how you press red grapes, and that is all that's left of them. So, what is it called? Auto regulator. So, this is Suliza's rose from yesterday. My rose? Yeah! The sugars haven't yet turned into alcohol, so the sugar is still <laughs> very high. It's super juicy and super sweet. The juice then runs out of the caper and the filtration systems begin. We start off with a gross filter. Gross meaning French for large, gross. It will later go through a fine filtration system. Okay, eight eight eight. Eight. The pipe has wine in it, and then that water is keeping it cool as it rushes through the pipe. Okay, go. Let's try. It's like concentrated vitamin C. Nothing. It's sour. Yes. Yeah. So this is a fun fork in the road for winemakers. This is the aging process. This red has been put into a stainless steel, so you can see the beautiful red ruby color on it. The other options are barrels, of course, or other receptacles like amphora. This is a white wine for the rosé. Stands for three days for all the sediment before the flesh. Go down to the bottom. Then, when all of that has gone down, gone down to the bottom, they take the juice out and goes next door to the new cellar. Okay, this is a filter where we filter the white wine. So the white wine goes in here, goes all the way through all of these little sections. You can see this one is clean out. This 
bardzo czwarty jest pink. Yeah. This is the white wine sediment from the filtering process. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So this is all, all organic material, dry organic material. Yeah. These are tanks of pinotage, and the rooibos leaves are being added as the pinotage ages. So they'll impart their wonderful oh. flavors, and then later it'll be filtered out. So you're left with rooibos-infused pinotage wine. So this is where the white wine is fermenting. It happens at around 12 to 22 degrees, whereas the red ferments at around 20 to 32 degrees. So it's all temperature controlled. But yeah, you're looking at just over a million red. It's about 150,000 rand. One filter. That's like reverse osmosis. Yes. So it's a filter yes. that's meant to fight. But you're in heaven. You just walk around and just pull wine. You can see how different <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Yeah, so this is a different type of wine. This is really for Yeah, okay. This is a different type of wine. It's got gas inside. But now it only needs to go through the filters before the machine. So you don't taste it. So how do you know if it's ready? I, you go up in the tank and you smell the, the, the CO2, the gas that the wine gives off. And then if there's a problem, you can smell it. It's easy to Smell. You've been drinking from the barrels for the past 10 minutes now. We've had Cab Sav, Shiraz, and a Pinotage. Yeah. Alec. Yeah. Is it lost? Yo! Yum. Heaven. These are 200,000 liter tanks. The average barrel holds 300 liters, 200 to 300 liters. And this is 200,000. I tasted the Shiraz in it and it was sweet. I found out that that wine, that Shiraz, is being shipped off to China because that's how they like it. They like it a bit more sweet, but also with a higher alcohol. So some of these Shirazes that are being shipped to China are at a 17% alcohol. 14 is standard. 17, 17 is, is night night now. This is the final step at the winery. The bottles are being filled with wine. have the cork placed in them. They are then hand boxed, hand packaged. And then stored for later distribution around the world. And what will happen with the labels, interestingly, is China will physically ship the labels here to be put onto the bottle and then sold back to them or brought over to them. One of the many ways of making wine working as a co-op, working as an exporter, working to the likings of what they're wanting overseas, and just making a quality business out of it. So they will lie sleeping here until they are shipped all around the world for distribution. And that is that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.